Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, aka The Diligent Dev, and welcome to episode one of View in Five Minutes, where I try to distill view concepts in as little as five minutes. Now, if you find this content valuable, please smash that like and subscribe button. And today we're gonna to be talking about generating a view project with the View CLI. So without any further ado, let's jump over to the computer and get right into it. Now, before we get into how to create a view project, you'll need to have Node.js installed on your machine. So you want to go to nodejs.org, and I typically download the stable version, which is recommended for most users. Now, once you have that installed, there are two different ways you can create a view project. The first is by installing the CLI globally on your machine, and the second is by using NPX, which acts as an intermediate with the CLI. So if you want to install it globally, which I don't really recommend since NPX does most of this, um, you can go to cli.viewjs.org and you'll see you'll run npm install dash g, that means you're installing it globally, at view slash cli. Now I'm going to be using NPX. So in order to generate a view project with NPX, we'll run NPX view create and I'll just call my project view five men episode one and you'll see now we have two options available default which will install like the base view configuration and manually select features which I highly suggest that you do so we'll ch check that now the first option is Babel you're always going to want to include this because it's a transpiler that makes the JavaScript we'll be writing readable by most browsers if not all uh, the next option is TypeScript, and that's if you want to use TypeScript in your application. Unfortunately, I don't really recommend it with Vue at the current moment. We're shooting this. Vue 2 is out. I believe Vue 3 is in beta, um, and it's supposed to handle TypeScript be better, but Vue 2 does not handle TypeScript very well, so I would not suggest you use that. Uh, progressive Web App functionality. I usually include this at a minimum it's going to make your application installable and there's a lot of other things you do but I could create a whole nother video so you'd want to go check out what a progressive web app is the next thing is router and I usually always include this it's the view router and it's how you do your routing to your different pages the next thing is Vuex and I typically use Vuex in all my applications that are going to be a little bit more complex so it's your state management and it's by far the best state management that I've ever worked with. And we'll have another video covering this and we'll also cover the view router. Uh, CSS preprocessors, if you're going to use SAS in your application or less, you're going to want to install this so that it can process your CSS so it'll make it readable by the browser. Linter and Formatter, I usually choose this. It's chosen by default and it'll help you catch errors in your code. If you want to learn more about this, you'll, you can go to ESLint and uh, check out their documentation. And then you have unit testing, which is testing different parts of your application. And I typically check this for more complex applications, so I have some way of doing unit testing before my build kicks off. And then we have end-to-end -end testing. And this is where you can test a whole application end-to-end, -end, or EDE. So typically what I like to check off here is I'll keep Babel, I'll choose Progressive Web App, Router, Vuex. I like using SAS. So I'll check CSS processor, I'll keep these, and for now we won't include the unit tests. And then you'll just hit enter. And then it's asking you if you wanna use history mode for your router. If you don't use history mode, you're gonna have a hash in your URL, so I always enable this. And then it's gonna ask you which preprocessor, CSS preprocessor you're gonna be using. So I, I typically use SAS and SCSS. And then it's going to ask us what kind of linter and formatting, and it's going to set up the config for our ESLint. And I usually just do the top one, or I'm sorry, I do ESLint plus prettier. And then I always lint on save. And I always store this in a dedicated config file. And it's going to ask me if I want to use this preset for future projects. And I'm going to say yes. And then you save this preset. So we'll just say view default, or actually we'll just say my view default hit enter it's going to take a while to install but since we save this as a preset when we go and run this again you'll see that show up and you can select that so that's really all there is to 
creating a view project. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, just drop me a note in the comment section below. Until next time, happy coding.